So to get started, let's add a div that'll hold our slider content and slider controls together. We'll give it a custom class. In this case, I'll call it team-slider underscore component. And that way I can apply styles to this slider that won't affect other sliders throughout the site. Now inside of that, let's add a collection list and we'll connect it to our team's collection. We'll give that collection wrapper a class of team-slider underscore CMS underscore wrap. And inside of that, the list will have a class of list and the item will have that class of item. So if we wanted to build the same structure but not use collection list, we could have a div with the class of CMS wrap. And inside that, we'd have a div with the class of CMS list. And in that, we'd have a div with CMS item. And we'd just duplicate that item for each of the slides we want to have. Now, in this case, we're gonna use an actual collection list instead. And here on the CMS wrap, we'll give it a combo class of swiper. On the list, it'll have a combo class of swiper dash wrapper. And on the slide, it'll have a combo class of swiper dash slide. And what we'll do is drop in a card component into that item. You can have any kind of content inside each item, whether it's an image, some headings, or anything in there. Now on this list here, we're gonna apply flex. So the item stack side by side. And on this item here, we want three items in view. So we'll give it a width of 100 divided by 3%. And we'll notice the items are actually getting squished here. So let's set it to don't shrink or grow. And now we have three cars in view like so. Now we want a gap between these slides. And if we apply a gap here, it's gonna make our slide kind of overflow and it'll also break the swiper. So swiper allows us to use a space between option to set a pixel or percent gap, but that doesn't work with rim and it wouldn't work with any spacing variables we have. So what we could do instead is on the item here, if we want a gap of two rim between our slides, we would add some left and right padding of one rim on each side, and that'll make it look like we have two rim space in between. Now this slide isn't aligning with the rest of our content, so to fix that on the CMS wrap, we can just add some negative margin of one rim on each side. It'll make it wider and align with the rest of the content like so. Now, if we want to connect this all to variables on the left and right padding for our item, we'll head to custom and we'll do calc and we'll add our variable name. In this case, mine is site gutter and I'll multiply that by 0.5. So I'm taking half of the site gutter and I'm applying that as padding on one side and then custom again, half of the site gutter as padding on the other side of the item. Now for the CMS wrap, I would just on this margin, go to custom and multiply it by negative 0.5 in this case. And we'd do the same thing on the other side so that everything lines up and it's connected to our spacing variable like so. Now, if we were to go ahead and preview this, we'll notice a couple things uh, that happen with Swiper. First of all, we're not seeing our extra slides anymore because the entire collection list Swiper sets to overflow hidden. And also our items here aren't uh, as tall as each other anymore, even though the collection list is set to flex stretch to stretch them all out. And the reason for that is Swiper gives the items a height of 100% which obviously makes them kind of just auto like so. So what we could do if we tried and set on this base class to override the height back to auto, which is default, um, we'll notice when we preview that's not actually gonna work. And that's because Swiper CSS is just more specific. So it's overriding the styles we're setting in Webflow. So anytime we wanna override Swiper styles, we can apply it to the two classes combined. So when I stack this here, I set auto. Now we'll notice it's actually gonna work because it's overriding uh, Swiper's styles. So we we'll wanna do the same thing for the CMS wrap. Swiper's setting it to overflow hidden. So we'll just wanna make sure we set it to overflow visible. And again, we're doing that to the two classes combined so that our styles override swiper styles and we get to see this extra content here. So this is all working, good to go there. Now to make it responsive, we can just on each breakpoint change the width of the items. So if we do 50% width on tablet, that would uh, have two slides per view. If we do 100%, that would be one slide per view, or we could do 75% if we wanna see a little bit of the next slide here. So we can kind of just override things across breakpoints like so. And if you'd prefer not to use breakpoints, but use container queries instead, um, we can actually go ahead and give the component here a container type, and the value would be inline-size. 
and then we'd go ahead and add in an embed. And so here we can just style things based on the space available within our whole component. So I can say at container, if the width is smaller than we'll say something like 40 M, we'll go ahead and set the um, slides here. So I'll just copy their class and we'll wanna make sure we're targeting both classes. So that way you can override the default style. So I'll say this slide with the class of swiper slide and it's going to have a width and I'll use calc here and I'll say um, 100% and we'll say divide it by two. So that way we get two slides per view on the next sort of view. So somewhere down here, it's gonna switch to two slides per view. And then if I want it to add even a smaller screen size, like maybe when this is less than, the container width is less than 25M, I could switch it to divide it by one if I want one slide per view down here or I could say divide it by something like 1.5 if I want one and a half slides per view. And I could get that in uh, right there. Actually, I might do 1.2 and see what that looks like. So that's looking much better. And the advantage to this approach is if we take this slider component and we decide to move it inside of a sidebar later on, uh, maybe we put it in, in different things, we'll notice that the slides, the amount of slides we're showing inside this component, in this case, it's two, um, eventually it'll switch to three it'll be dynamic based on the space we have available for this component, um, which gives us a lot of flexibility. So from there, we can also go ahead and drop in any controls we plan to have. So I have a simple controls component. I'll just go ahead and unlink that for a minute. In this case, it's just a div I set to flex and space between. But inside that, I've given a, a, a slider team bullet underscore wrap. That's a flex and it allows the bullet points to stack kind of side by side with a gap. I've done with auto important to override swipers default styles that they try to set on the bullet wrapper. Um, and then inside of that, I have the team slider bullet item, um, which in this case, I've just set it to a width of uh, one rim, uh, min width of zero to make sure it doesn't get squished, um, aspect ratio square, and um, given it kind of just like a border, um, like so. And so I'm using custom classes here so that the uh, pagination inside my team slider, it can be styled different than the pagination inside of like a blog slider um, so that the styles are flexible per the, the type of slider that we're building. And in this case, I've given this bullet item a combo class of is active that changes its background color um, so that the active item is uh, different like so. And it'll automatically generate these bullets depending on the number of slides that we actually have. Um, so that'll work out well for us. In this case, I've given this uh, a class of draggable wrap, and this is like the parent that has some styles. And inside, I have this uh, team slider draggable handle that has a background color and uh, a cursor and things like that. And then here for my buttons, I have a team slider um, button element, and I've added this class of swiper button disabled so I can affect what the disabled state will look like. I can turn the opacity down, maybe turn off the pointer events, whatever I want to do for this disabled state. And I've given it under a class attribute um, with a class of is prev here. And for the other one, I've given it a class attribute of is next. Um, so that way I can control which one's the previous, which one's the next one, and uh, without that interfering with my disabled uh, class. That way this disabled class works for both the previous and the next, um, like so. And so once we have that set, um, what we can do, and we can put any kind of button component inside of these divs. These are just divs that are going to kind of hold our, our buttons. Um, so what I'll do is I'll walk over to the code here. And so here I've imported the Swiper CSS, Swiper JavaScript, and inside this DOM content loaded, we loop through our team slider component and we find the Swiper element, which is our CMS wrap inside of there. And uh, we go ahead and set up this Swiper. So slides per view auto, that's great. So we can control it per breakpoint. Um, follow finger is set to true. That means we can scrub the slider by dragging it. If we set it to false, then when we uh, press and drag, it'll only move one slide at a time. It'll be like a swipe instead of a scrub. Uh, so I usually set that to true. Free mode false means it's gonna snap one slide after the other, but if we set this to true, then we can freely drag it. And when we let go, it won't necessarily snap to the closest slide. Uh, so that this basically turns off snapping altogether if we set free mode to true. 
a slide to click slide. That means if we set this to true and we clicked on like the third slide, it would slide into view. We're not gonna do that here. Uh, centered slides, if we set this to true, the active slide would always be in the middle instead of on the left. Um, auto height here, if we set that to true, then uh, whichever slide is active would increase the height of our entire um, swiper. So we're not doing that there. And then there's this active class being added to the duplicate slide and the main slide. So if we want to style our active uh, slide to look differently, we can. Mouse wheel, with this setting set, whenever we uh, swipe on our trackpad left and right here, it'll actually move the slider. So if you don't want that, you can totally take that uh, option out. Uh, keyboard here, whenever we use our left and right arrow keys, it'll also move the slider, but only when we're scrolled into view of that slider here. And then here for our navigation, this is where I'm targeting that uh, team slider button element with the class of is next and the one with the class of is prev. So when we click on these two, it'll go uh, next and previous. This is where I'm setting up the bullet wrappers, the active class for those like so and the um, draggable element. So we can delete the scroll bar or the pagination or whatever we don't need. And if we want it to create another slider, we can just copy this code and we can actually just change out the classes. So maybe this is my blog slider component. And inside that, I might have a blog slider button element that might be circle arrow. So maybe it's positioned to absolute to uh, overlap the slides or something. So could have completely different styles. Um, we can have the blog bullet wrap like so, and the blog uh, draggable wrap, and the, they can be completely styled differently um, than the team one because it's using different classes, which means it can have different speeds, different settings, and everything here. So it's pretty easy to just extend this um, based on the type of sliders you'll need throughout your site. So if I just go ahead and save that, I'll go ahead and turn on free mode just so you can kind of see what that uh, looks like. So if we go ahead and save that, and then we come over here and we preview, um, we should notice that we'll be able to freely drag these slides and when we let go, it doesn't snap. It's not snapping to where that one's in view. Now I can click my pagination. I can drag this scroll bar. When I'm at the ends of this, it disables it like so. So that's uh, good to go. And that's pretty much all we need to build this slider. So I'll leave a uh, link to the clonable in the description below.